Hey guys, we're back on this engine again. You seen in the last video I pulled the head off to see if it's cast iron sleeve or aluminum bore. It turns out to be cast iron sleeve and uh, it's in pretty good shape. So today we're going to do a complete rebuild of it. This is a Briggs and Stratton power built 12.5 horsepower. I was told the power built series uh, don't have cast iron sleeves that are all aluminum bore. Well, maybe this one don't have the right flywheel cover on it, but it's got a cast iron sleeve in it. It's a model 28. Uh, this one was built in 1997. You've seen in a, a couple videos a while back, a couple videos ago, I had a, had this engine starting for the first time since I got it. And uh, so today I'm going to show you a complete teardown, uh, rebuild, and reassembly on it. Uh, the only thing I'm not going to show you is uh, taking the air filter, the air breather assembly off the carburetor. I don't have it on here. Uh, that's just pretty simple. A couple bolts and you got that off. Uh, I'll be pulling the starter off, of course. And I'm getting ready to drain the oil out of it. Be sure you get as much oil out of it as you can because it makes uh, the disassembly a little cleaner when you don't have oil running all over your workbench or down your shirt. So, uh, well, let's get started, guys. Now I got all the oil drain out of it, I'm going to take the carburetor and the muffler off. Okay, I take the carburetor off to take out these two 3 3H bolts. Now, some of them have a star drive or a Phillips drive in there. You can use a screwdriver or a torch bit on the socket. It might make it easier. On the other side, there's a linkage. And I'll show you how to get that loose. Alright, here's the linkage I'm talking about that hooks on the back side of the carburetor. This is a 5 16 bolt. I use a nut driver to take that out. It's also the same size bolt to hold your cable clamp here. Also note, this is not bent in a Z shape. It was just a temporary setup. I was in a hurry when I set it up. And I also don't have the right uh, governor linkage arm on here. As you can see, it's all bent because I didn't want to cut it. Uh, I can take one off another engine if I need to. That was just a temporary setup to get the engine running, but it does work. Okay, now I'm going to take these two bolts out. You can see that one on top is a star, and one on the bottom is a Phillips. So we'll take the carburetor. Okay, after you get your bolts loose, the carburetor comes loose. You just pop your fuel, fuel line off, and you wiggle that linkage. And like I said, that linkage is not right, but here's the carburetor. And if you didn't drain the gas out of it, you have a little gas in the, car, in the bowl. But if you tip it up, gas will come out of it. Now let's get the muffler. Okay now on this type of muffler the pipe screws into the block it's got a lock nut here that holds it on. I'm taking a chisel and a hammer here breaking it loose. And your whole muffler should just screw out. If not, take use a pipe wrench on this pipe here. And be careful not to crush it. Here's the muffler. And don't forget to unhook your keel wire and your starter wire hooks to your starter. And I already took the throttle cable off. So now I'm going to loosen the bolts and get ready to pull the engine off. Okay, after you got all your bolts and all your belts off, and all your wires are disconnected. You're ready to pull the motor off. Just tip it forward. Make sure your double step pulley clears it. Now on some motors, the double step pulley don't clear the hole because they just got a little tiny hole for the crankshaft. That's the case, you better take the double step pulley off before you start pulling the engine. Don't drop one of these engines. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take the double step pulley off. This is a 5 8 5 8 socket. Uh, sometimes it's best to put a pipe wrench on here. We're going to see how tight this one is. This one ain't too tight. Now, it can be different size bolts. This is the usual size, though. Okay, now I'm going to take the double step pulley off. 
Now most of the time these get stuck on the crankshaft. Just take a rubber mallet and pound them off. But in this case, this one ain't been on very long, so it comes right up. Sometimes you'll have a keyway in there. This one's got the keyway built in on it. Okay, now we're ready to start tearing the engine down. You can skip this step if you want to. You don't have to take the starter off. But I always do, because it just gives you a little more extra room, I guess you could say. It won't be in your way all the time. You take out these two bolts. In this case, it's a T30, yeah, T30 torch bit. And be careful on this one, because you got to go at an angle. It's easy to strip them out. So you just take these two bolts off, and your whole starter comes right off. There's the starter off. A little tip, if you don't have one of these magnetic parts trays, get you one. Makes life a lot easier. Now we're going to take the flywheel cover off. I'm missing one bolt here. This is 3 8 First, be two bolts here, and you get two bolts up here on top. You just take them all out, and your whole flywheel cover will pull off. Also, note uh, if your motor, motor has a dipstick like this, there's usually oil laying in the dipstick, so be prepared for a minute. Okay, after you get your bolts out, just wiggle a little bit, and come right off. Since I already drained the oil out, there wasn't much oil in there. Okay, now we're going to do the hardest part of the whole rebuild and we'll pull the flywheel off. On the screen you get three bolts here. Hold this little metal screen on. They're a uh, T10 torques. This comes off here. Here's your big nut that holds your flywheel to the crankshaft. You lift these two little bolts. These hold the plastic flywheel fins on. You're going to have to take them out if you use the technique I'm going to show you. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is break the flywheel bolt loose. This is a 15 16 socket. That's the easiest way to do it. Now we're ready to pull it off. Okay, if you look, I've got a wheel puller set up on here. This is the easiest way I've found to pull these flywheels off. Some people take long screwdrivers and hit the crankshaft. It's best not to do that because you can bust the block. Now I put the bolt back in here so this has something to rest against. Now, technically you're supposed to use a ratchet, but always use an impact wrench. Make sure you run it in forward here. There it goes. That's all you gotta do. Back this off a little bit. The flywheel's loose. Take this thing off, take your bolt back off, and it'll pull right off. There it is after pull the flywheel out. Go ahead and blow some dirt out of here. I'm going to go ahead and take the coil off. You don't have to, but since I'm going to be cleaning this block real good, I'm going to go ahead and take it off so I don't have to worry about getting it wet or anything. You can go ahead and take the stator off too if you want. The coil is held on, held, held on with two 5 16 bolts. You get a wire here, disconnect. This is your coil. Your stator is held on by four quarter inch bolts. Take them out and it comes out. And this is what charges your battery on your motor. This is hooked to a rectifier diode and it sends DC power to your battery. Keep it charged up while you're cutting grass. Okay, I already took the spark plug out of the Champion J19. Now I'm going to get ready to pull the head. You got to loosen these two bolts. Hold this sheet metal on. And don't forget to put this cover back on. This helps deflect air through the fins on your head to keep your engine cool. If you don't put this back on, you'll burn the engine up. You take these two out like this, and you can get to all the head bolts. I'm using a 3H drive breaker bar. These are half inch bolts. These are supposed to be tighter than this. And now I got them all broke loose. So we'll just take them all out. You can either use a breaker bar like this, use it like a screwdriver, and just get them all out. I like to use these speed bars now and then. 
But if you're in a real big hurry, just use a drill. Put an adapter in a drill and use that. Now you want the last bolt, get ready to catch your head. You don't want to fall on the floor. Sometimes they stick to the block. There's your head gasket here, and this one's pretty much shot because half of it's stuck on here. And this is your head. This one's not too dirty because it looks like it's been taken off before and clean. But I'll clean it again with the wire brush and the drill. And now we get the head off. You can see the piston and the valves now. Carbon buildup ain't too bad, but I'll clean it up some more. Yeah, it's all. I'll clean all this up real good. Probably be pulling the valves out and reseating them. Now I'll go ahead and take the valve spring cover off, or valve cover, whatever you want to call it. I was supposed to have two of the same bolts in, 5 16 drive. I lost one when I first got this engine, so I just put a little screw in there. It worked. And then you just take this off. This is your oil breather here. And you can see your valve springs in here. And if you order a gasket kit, you'll get a new valve cover gasket kit. You get that gasket on there, which is best to replace because they usually leak. Okay, now we're going to break the crankcase bolts loose. I got my breaker bar again here. Make sure you get it. Watch your knuckles. If you're not careful, you can bust your knuckles real easy on these little engines. So just break them all loose like this. And now after you got all your bolts out, I like to use a rubber mallet. Some people just use a regular hammer and tap the ends off. If you use a regular hammer, just be careful because these uh, mounting brackets can break off the block. I've seen that happen before. Uh, also, be sure you got a rag here to catch any oil. If you let one of these drain for 10 days, it's still going to have oil coming out of it. Just gently tap the end of it. It'll start coming off. Once you get it started, you just wiggle it off. That's a, quite a bit of sludge build up in here. I'm going to clean all this out with degreaser and everything. I got bought a complete gasket kit for the motor. Back gasket kit. Okay, so now we're going to start taking the stuff out of it. And this is your oil slinger. It works your governor. The weights sling out. That's what works your governor. This is your governor arm. It hooks to your carburetor. And I'll flip this back a little bit. On the valves. Make sure both your valves are closed. It's easier to get your camshaft out. You get it just right sometimes, and it comes right out. This is your camshaft. Inspect your loads for anywhere. This one looks all right. And your valve tappets. You go ahead and pull these out. These push your valves up and down around on your camshaft. Sometimes these will wear if the engine has been low at all. Okay, here's a view inside the block. This is your connecting rod here. Now, on some engines, like this one, you just have to loosen the bolts up. But on some of the other types, they have a metal plate on here. It's got little tabs that bend over your bolts to lock them in. Uh, I like those better. These tend to work loose after a while. So if I can find one, I'm going to stick one on here. That way you don't have to worry about the rod uh, bolts coming loose and throwing a rod. Uh, this is your counterweights here. A lot of people get the that little see that little rod right here that connects to your counterweights. A lot of people call that your connecting rod because they take them apart, and when it, the counterweights let go, this rod is the cause of it. It breaks. And people see that, and this is actually your connecting rod here. It will connect to the top of your piston up here. And it works off your crankshaft like this. And it connects to the piston and the wrist pin. We're going to pull the piston out here in a minute after I loosen these bolts up.